Several applications have been made for VSAT licenses in relation to services provided by Starlink, but these remain, sadly, undetermined. And I know that several people are waiting for their applications to be determined. I know we have been assured many times <coughs> that will be done shortly and in a timely fashion, um, but unfortunately that has not been done so far. But there is some contention as to, as to whether Starlink terminals do constitute VSAT uh, equipment. Some, some disagree uh, with, with that, although my, my clear view is that they, they are a VSAT. Uh, we have had discussions with SURE specifically about this uh, issue, and I've also been in uh, contact with some of those who've applied uh, for licenses. Um, I do hope to be in a position to um, determine those applications and I do think it's quite likely that some of those applications, if not all of them, will be granted uh, fairly shortly. Uh, but I, I will update members of this House as, as that happens. I thought we should have allowed people to have VSATs because it's the only thing that seems to get our monopoly provider to provide a decent service to the consumer. Transformation or rather that, that you can get from these things. And um, my concern is uh, if we um, if, if we cherry pick a select few in the community who can um, who can access these services and, um, and and tell the rest of the community that they can't or that they um, that they have to pay many thousands of pounds to be able to do it. Um, I think there are also implications on um, if, if we allow the, um, the the higher fee paying users of the current service, if we take those out of the existing pot, what effect does it have on the and again, um, you know, the, the average user who, uh, who was paying far less. So, so I think there are some really serious political implications. In fact, I campaigned very strongly when that ordinance was, before that ordinance was brought into place, for the provision of, of, uh, of, of VSATs to be allowed for everybody for no charge. So actually, yes, I agree with you. I don't think it should be just the exclusive domain of people that can afford the £5,400 a year fee. So, um, and I'm sure that his department, who will be negotiating the next contract, will take that into account. So I also um, have some concerns. I'm not against the road we're going down, but I'd just like to make it publicly known that I also have concerns expressed by my honourable colleague, uh, Mark Pollard here, about the universal service for people who just want a standard phone line, and they must be protected.